So just to give you a taste of what I what I do, I'm going to show you the quick trailer. Uh, зараз я вам покажу uh, трейлер до свого фільму Good Night, який ми з Томбольця активно напродюсували. Він був номінований на премію Бафта, дуже престижну британську премію. Ну і ще просто зрозуміли, чим вона саме займається, і які фільми у нас створюють. All right, let's check it out. Yeah. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> yeah. You and your ideas. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that outfit? Too sexy for yeah. you. You could get a point in control. How old are you guys? Sixteen and a half. Sixteen and a half. So let me guess, uh, you're sixteen and you're a half. <laughs> Ну і загалом я вас знімаю фільми такі реалістичні на тематику тінейджерську, де зазвичай відбувається десь у середмісті. Ну це те, чим вона займається, вона також хоче спитати вас потім. Я не знаю, куди ми такі фільми знімали, що вас так діло. So, but today we're going to use uh, one of my more recent films, uh, which is actually playing here at the festival, six o'clock tonight. Come check it out, called Rainbow Party. And this is a film that I made last year, and I actually produced it, but I also wrote it and directed it. So it's one of my babies, and I can talk in detail about it. So um, this is the case study that we're going to use today to kind of reference, and I'm going to show you a little bit from the film. І саме сьогодні у нас буде кейс статі за фільмом «Рейнбоу Паті» і «Слухова вечірка», який сьогодні можна буде подивитись у шостій в кінопанорамі, до речі, приходьте, там буде ще Q&A, потім взяли її після показу. Ну і вона його не тільки продюсувала, але й повністю і писала сценарій, і була режисером фільму, тому це і дитятко. Можемо починати. Я. 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 But I co-produced it with the UK, so that's something we're going to talk about a little bit later. It's about how to find money, which is not always easy. But uh, that's an example of something that put together from two countries. It's a film in Spanish for Europeans, but we speak Europeans with local accent. So again, I'm going to show you about the first three minutes of the film. Um, if you want to see the rest, you have to come at six o'clock tonight <laughs> to the screening. It's the teen spirit section, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you the first three minutes, and I hope you enjoy it. Зараз ми подивимо тільки три перші хвилини, якщо хочете повністю подивитися, подивитися, приходьте до шостої кінопанорами, ви зрозуміли. Exactly, кінопанорами. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm going to assume that most of you, or at least some of you in here, have a dream of making a short film for the first time or your second or third film and want to take it to the next level. So what I'm going to focus on today is to sort of try and give you some good advice, some practical advice about how to, to sort of drive that forward. So yeah, otherwise it'll just be an interesting case study on the film, but hopefully I'm going to give you some tools or some thoughts that will, um, yeah. Ну і саме поза кейс-стаді за цим фільмом, я ще хочу вам якісь дати корисні практичні поради, якщо ви мрієте нарешті зняти свій перший фільм, або хочете другий чи третій фільм зняти більш якісно, як це зробити, які є ще для цього. So, you have an idea. You wrote a script, or you're about to write a script, and you think, this is great, this will make a really good short film. That's step number one, that's fantastic, you have a good idea. But you have to stop before you go and go, I'm going to make this film and get all my friends together. Just take a moment and just ask yourself these questions because making a short film can take a long time, all of your energy, a lot of your money, and you're going to have to live with this project, especially if it's a success. You're going to have to live with it for like at least two years. I mean, I just showed you Goodnight. We shot that in 2011 and I'm still talking about it. So, you know, hopefully you, you're going to be talking about it five years later, but really, really take some time to think, okay, is this the film I want to make? No, first of all, you need an idea. When you start to make a film, you need a scenario, a story, but when you have a good idea, you think, okay, you can make a film, think about it, if you can make it, what can you do? What can you do? Що ви з ними саме зробите? Чи ви та сама людина, яка зможе зняти цю історію? І коли ви вже створите цей фільм, ви маєте розуміти, що якщо він піде далі, далі на фестивалі, що треба буде його супроводжувати. Це забере багато вашого часу, багато ваших грошей. І, наприклад, Ева почала свій шлях в 2011 році. І от досі про це говорить про те, як вона знімала свої перші короткометражні фільми. So, I mean, the first question is, why are you making this film? You know, is it just for fun? I mean, there's a lot of answers to this question, but you have to know why you're making this specific film. And this can be a different answer for every film you make. For example, for me, why I made Rainbow Party is I wanted to direct something. So I wanted to make the film. Also, I had a personal reason. I, I had experienced a lot of what this girl goes through. So I had a story I really wanted to tell. And I mean, but it can be simple things like you want to try something new. Maybe you're a filmmaker and you've made a few different films, but you want to try some technical thing. Or you want to prove to financiers that you're ready to make a feature film. So maybe you make a short version, maybe a scene from, from the feature film. Have you guys seen Whiplash? Do you know this one with the drummer? Mm -hmm. So he actually made a short version, like the, the scene when, uh, I believe it's the scene when the, the guy's like, Are you in, is there someone out of tune? And he goes through the band and he's like, is it you, is it you, is it you? 
So he made that as a short film with a different actor, and that convinced financiers to make a feature film. So sometimes that's your reason, but there's a lot of reasons, and it can be a very passionate reason, like you just want to try something new. But just be really clear about why you're making the film. Ну і тобто поставте про це все питання, навіщо я роблю саме цей фільм. Це просто задля себе, для задля здоров'я, чи я хочу, наприклад, як Ева спробувати себе в якості режисера фільму, коли вона робила радіону вечірку. Я хочу відпрацювати якісь свої практичні навики, я хочу показати людям, які можуть профінансувати мої фільми в майбутньому, що я вже готовий і готова до повнометражного фільму. Наприклад, вона привела приклад. Я забув, як українською цей фільм відбере. Ось, ось, так. Режисер спочатку знімав кілька коротких фільмів, і коли вже ті люди, хто бюджетує, вони побачили, що в нього є потенціал, вони вкали в очі його повноцінний полнометражний фільм, і завдяки цьому зміг його зняти. Тобто, поставте питання, навіщо я це роблю, для кого, для чого. Cool. And then the other question, if you're really, really honest about, is are you really the right person to tell the story? Because you're telling stories, and you need to be genuine in your storytelling. Now, for example, with Rainbow Party, I actually wrote the script, but I had never planned on directing it because I was a producer. That was what I did. So I remember going to look for a director because I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to find someone who can tell the story and make it look nice and work with the actors. And I spoke to quite a few. I knew it needed to be a woman. I knew it needed to be someone from Iceland because it's in Icelandic. <laughs> but that was it. And so I went to a few of my friends who were really successful filmmakers and I spoke to them. But every time I spoke to them, they all said I should make this film, which was very nice. Nobody really usually tells you that you should make it. But, um, but it was really, because it's based a little bit on my experience as a teenager, that's why it was, such, it was hard for me to bring it to somebody else. But that being said, you don't always have to make a story that's based on your life. Like you can make a sci-fi, you know, you can make a historical piece, that's fine. But you just have to really know why you are making the story. Is there a theme you're really passionate about? Is there a character in there that you really relate to? But just be really, really honest about that because that's what's going to carry you through the whole production. And sometimes you might be sitting on a really good script that should go to someone else. So think about it before you go any further. Ну і друге питання, яке варто собі поставити, це з боку режисури, чи саме та людина, яка може представити цю історію. Тобто Ева спочатку був сценарій, вона написала сценарій, але вона не збиралася цей фільм режисувати. Вона тільки розуміла, що ну, ця історія вона була для неї дуже близька, тому що вона використовувала якийсь свій особистий досвід у свого життя і поклала на досвід цієї героїні. І вона написала сценарій і почала шукати людину, яка б зняла цей фільм. Вона знала, що це має бути дівчина, що це має бути дівчина з Ісландії. Вона почала ходити через по своїх подругах, питати, хто може зняти, давати сценарій. Всі казали, що так, сценарій крутий, але це твоя історія, ти маєш їх сама розповісти. Um, think about how long your film is going to be, because this will affect what you're going to do with it. So if you want to go into can, make it less than 15, ideally no longer than 10 or 11 minutes. That's already something you have to think about. So how long is your film? Maybe it's meant for TV. Maybe it's not meant to be a short film. What's your genre? Be clear about that. Is it a drama? Is it a horror? Is it some kind of thing in between? Maybe you need to be a little bit more clear about how you explain it to people. Um, yeah. Трошки продовжуючи попередню тему, що не обов'язково використовувати власний досвід, наприклад, коли ви пишете історію як сценарист, ви можете просто взяти щось, що вам дуже близьке, якусь тему або якогось героя, і головне, щоб це було не було близько, тому що це все маєте принести через весь процес зйомок. А потім треба подумати також, якого жанру та якої тривалості буде фільм. Якщо ви збираєтесь, наприклад, відправляти його на камі, то це 10-12 хвилин, максимум 15. Ну і там потім вже, якщо це драма, або якщо це фільм жах, треба подумати, якими саме методи ви будете все і жанр передавати. Um, you know, you don't need to be a hundred percent sure, but do you think that you have a shot in hell to raise the money for it? I mean, if it's like a forget about it kind of situation, then don't waste your time. But of course, you have to be positive. So the question is, can you finance it? Or, more importantly, if you're like a director or writer, can you find a producer who will finance it? Because I tell you this, producing your own films as a director is your worst nightmare. Because you will not sleep, you will not eat, you will stress about everything that has nothing to do with directing. So 
find, if you possibly can, someone that really believes in your project and will drive it forward. So just to have a shot at financing, that's really your key is to find a producer. Ну, наступне це обов'язково подумати, хто буде фінансувати фільм, і якщо я продюсер, буду готовий до того, щоб просто лізти зі шкіри, щоб знайти гроші для фінансування. А якщо ви сценарист чи режисер, думати про те, де знайти хорошого продюсера, який це зробить, профінансує ваш фільм. Тому що, як каже я з власного досвіду, буде продюсувати власний фільм, фільм той, який ти ще режисуєш, дуже важко, це просто забирає всі всі твої сили. And then finally, once you have your producer, or once you have your producer, once you have your director, talk about and make sure you agree on what are you going to do with the film. Is it meant for a film festival, or is it meant for television, or something else? Because the worst thing that can happen is you make the film and you disagree. So make sure you have talked about this stuff. You know, are we aiming for you know local film festivals or international? Are we going all the way? If so, how are we going to pay for it? And the last thing is about just have those conversations. What if we win an award? We, we win money. Who gets the money? Who gets the statue? It's really stupid, but this comes up all the time. You have to be really optimistic that you're going to win lots of awards, because of course you will. And, and then who gets the money? Does it go back into like, your next production? Do you split it 50-50? Does the director get it? But the best way to avoid any problems down the line is just to have those conversations straight away and make a vision and have a dream for your film. Ну і обов'язково треба заздалегідь, коли у вас вже є команда, є режисер, є продюсер, є сценарист, проговорити моменти, що ви будете робити з фільмом, для чого ви його знімаєте. Ви його знімаєте для телебачення або для фестивалів, щоб потім розуміти одразу після закінчення процесу зйомок, що ви будете з ним робити, тому що після цього можуть з'явитися якісь недомовки, якісь розходження у поглядах. І потім, якщо ви відправили його на фестивалі, і він відправили, ви виграє якісь нагороди, гроші, що з цим грошим робити? Тобто вони підуть на наступний продакшн, чи вони підуть всі режисери, тому для цього треба підписувати контракт між продюсером, режисером та сценаристом. Cool. Step one. Write a script. I'm actually going to start with this last point. This is, I cannot hammer this home enough. Writing a good script and write, rewriting it and fixing it and working on it is your cheapest way to maximize your film's potential. Because it's page, it's a page, it's a computer, and it's some typing. And it's your time, of course, but you're not involving lots of people, lots of money. So spend time on your script. Переходячи саме до сценарію, Дуже уважно, дуже багато часу від початку приділяєте сценарію, тому що це найкращий, найкращий спосіб зробити фільм кращим. І це дуже просто, тому що потрібен просто комп'ютер, деякий вільний час, щоб сценарії покращити, щось там видалити, щось додати. I mean, write, rewrite, write again, rewrite again, get some notes, write again. I can't stress this enough. I think I did at least 15 versions of Rainbow Party. It's just something you... You always make it better. And if you make it worse, you can always go back to the last draft. But do, this is, this is something I did. Get notes from a few people that you respect. I mean, your producer, of course, you need to, to collaborate with and get their notes. But I found with Rainbow Party that this was a really good way for me to approach other filmmakers that were a lot further on in their careers and ask them for advice. And that way I got to know them. So I approached a, a director called Runa Runarsson, for example. He did a fantastic short film called Two Birds, and he was Oscar nominated for another short film. So he's like someone I looked up to, was personally someone I really liked, and he had done similar genre. And he was cool, like he, he made the time. He read the script, he gave me some notes, some good, some bad <laughs> notes, but, but just pick a few people that you think you look up to and see if they want, you know, drop them an email, give them a call, see if they're willing to read your script. Because very often, if you, if you pick them for a reason, if you can tell them why them, because they are interested in the theme, then very often they're willing to read your script. Щоб сценарій пиші переписуєте, переписуєте, ще раз переписуєте, робіть нотатки, наприклад, в вечірку було 15 варіантів різних сценаріїв. Також, якщо вам потрібні якісь поради, то звертайтеся тільки до кількох знайомих, які, ну, чи думку поможають, поважаєте, або до якихось людей, які для вас авторитет в цій сфері. Наприклад, це хороший спосіб познайомитися з якимось автором, режисерами, які для вас авторитетні. Наприклад, так, я познайомилася з режисером фільму «Дві пташки», який цей фільм був номінований на Оскар, 
як короткометражка, і він знімає фільм в дотичному до її жанру, жанру жанрі. І тобто не сиротись, не писати, пояснити, чому саме ви хочете з цією людиною познайомитися, дати їй свій сценарій, щоб отримати її поради, тому що цій людині це теж приємно. I mean, the, the rest is sort of basic stuff, but it's always good to remember. I mean, you're writing a film, you're writing a script for film, so write the visuals, explain what we're watching, what we're seeing, because that's the best way to convey to your funders or to your, your co-producers, oh, that's what it's going to look like, that's what it's going to feel like. So don't put in too much dialogue, really use the visual language. Obviously, write again, edit, rewrite, edit again. Um, spell check, I can't tell you how annoying it is to read a script which has bad spelling because it takes no time at all. Um, and just try and make, it's a short film. Don't write 35 minutes because you're not going to be able to put it into many film festivals. <laughs> Good Night, for example, was 27 minutes. And it was really, really hard for us to get it into festivals. Eventually it happened, but it's tough. And, um, and just remember that what you put on the page is what you actually will film. So be very clear about you know, how long. If the script is 15 pages, it's probably going to be 15 minutes. Don't write a script that's 25 pages and go, oh, but it's going to be 15 minutes. Because then basically, if it's really going to be 15 minutes, you're going to throw away in the edit a whole bunch of stuff. And that's just a waste of time and money in the shoot. So keep thinking about, OK, when I come to edit the film, what's it going to look like? Is it on the page? And just really focus on getting that script right. Пишіть візуально, тобто, коли пишете, одразу продумайте, як це буде виглядати на екрані, пояснюйте в самому скрипті якісь моменти, як це буде робитись, тому що так буде вже зручніше, потім пояснюєте це продюсеру чи людям, які будуть фінансувати вас, щоб їх це зацікавило. Також переписуйте знову, обов'язково перевіряйте спелчек, це а, наскільки влучно вміщуються діалоги, тобто, коли ви будете знімати, щоб не було такого, що діалоги якось Ну, вони розтягують нас насправді дуже дружину вашого фільму, щоб вони були лучше е, ставлені фільм. А, ще такий момент, що зазвичай одна хвилина це одна сторінка скрипту. Тобто не сподівайтеся, що у вас, якщо у вас сценарій на 25 сторінок, що це буде 15 сторінок, 15 хвилин фільм. Ні, це буде 25 хвилин фільму. Тому що а, перший фільм, який вона показувала трейлер Гуднайт на добра ніч, він а, був 27 хвилин, і було дуже важко знайти фестивалі, які б його взяли. Спочатку ми потім вона відправили, але все ж таки. Є якісь питання щодо сценарію написання сценарію? Тому що ми зараз перейдемо до наступного до, до, до наступної фази продаж. Я маю питання. Я It's a good question because um, I'm not a script perfect like expert, but my opinion is that you can do whatever the fuck you want. Because honestly, you're making a short film, and short films are their own thing. It's not a feature film. I think the worst short films are ones that try and make a feature film in a short film. If it really is worth a feature film, then save it for later. Um, but I mean, I think, again, in my opinion, um, a good short has some development though. So it doesn't have to be so perfect, but you know, you don't want to watch a character go through like a, a day maybe and nothing changes for them. You want to see some progression, but does it need to have, you know, the three acts and the turning points? I, don't, I personally don't think so. I think it's a more, the cool thing about shorts is it's like a free, like, um, what's the word? Format, you know, do do what you want. Some people have a, like a crazy hook at the end and a little surprise, you know, and then don't have a third act really. You mentioned like you should keep your dialogues short. You mean like in the script or like in general in the short movie? I mean, I have a lot of dialogue actually in this, but a lot of it's improvised. Um, I mean, I think you, of course you can put dialogue, but remember that you're making a film. So if you have the whole film is like maybe in one room and people are talking the whole time, it's really hard to convince me why is this a film, not a play. So, I mean, think about the fact that you make a film and use the tools, it's a film, you can like shoot anything and edit stuff together and use music. So, I mean, I'd say dialogue is very important and like they're fantastic, Quentin Tarantino is an expert in dialogue, I mean, that's, that's fantastic, but don't rely on it. 
You know, especially because if you take a film to film festivals and you're watching an Icelandic film with subtitles, it's a lot of text actually. So hopefully you got some emotions out of it too. Hopefully I used the visual language. You'd be the judge of that. But but I'd say don't rely on dialogue. <laughs> Питання було зачитати того, наскільки варто підвіяти увагу саме діалогами у фільмі. І я вам кажу, що так, діалоги важливі, дуже важливі для розкриття ідеї, але якщо, наприклад, весь фільм – це якісь розмови в одній кімнаті, вона не розуміє, чому це фільм, чому це не п'єса. Тому використовуєте по максимуму можливості кінематографу, використовуєте різні локації, перебіг подій, якийсь розвиток подій, музику. Плюс, наприклад, ще в Ісландії вона каже, на фестивалях це завжди сутітками, ну, як у нас. І якщо це цілковитий діалог, то дуже важко сприймати фільм, читаючи ці сутітри знизу і розуміти, що люди. Тому не вкладатися цю повну діалогу, використовувати і інші інструменти. Я хочу спитати, чи ви змінили скрипт, коли ви починали шути? Це відбувається, і в цьому фільмі, і в інших фільмах, які ви продовжували, або, можливо, ви змінили скрипт, 10% на скрипт був змінений, або 50%, що це практика? Я маю, є момент в скрипті, що ви кажете, що це скрипт виробництва, і 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 ви кажете, що це скрипт it's a creative process. But um, for example, on especially bigger features and stuff, what they do is um, if there are changes once they start shooting, they'll put out what they call pink pages or blue pages, which is updated scenes. So you'll make sure to share that with your crew if there's a big change, if there's a small dialogue change, as long as you know that and your actor knows that, it's okay. But, but the big change, and the reason usually the script is different than the, the the final film is the editing process. And we'll go into that in a little bit. But um, I line produced, for example, a feature film called Rams. I don't know if you've seen it, it was at Mono, this wasn't it. And um, we were surprised when we saw the final version because the editor and the director realized some mistakes in the script. And uh, they took out a whole death and a funeral. It just was gone. <laughs> but, but that was the editing, because they could see and they could feel the film, and it worked really well. So that's usually where the changes happen. I mean, you react to some cool things on set, but try and be pretty... The clearer you are about what you're going to film, the cheaper the shoot is, the, the better it's going to go, the more time you're going to have with your actors. So I try and, try and pick a shooting script. Ну, питання стосувалося того, наскільки змінюється сценарій з часу вже початку зйомок фільму. І, ну, я вам кажу, що, звісно, він змінюється. А, варто починати знімати, коли ви вже бачите, що так, це той сценарій, який я хочу організувати, але можуть бути якісь маленькі зміни, може бути якась імпровізація реакторів на, на під час зйомок сцен. І це нормально. І якщо це невеличкі зміни, то це можна допускати, якщо це якісь маленькі зміни в діалозі, це, то це достатньо знати лише, там, наприклад, акторам та режисерам, які за це відповідають. Але якщо це якісь великі зміни, що стосується сценарію, то, наприклад, Ева також продюсувала фільм «Барани», який був на молодості, може, бачили. І коли команда зняла фільм, вони так побачили, подивилися його, і сценаристи, режисери зрозуміли, що вони зробили деякі помилки в сценарії, і ці помилки потрапили у фільм. І вже було якось пізно, що змінювати. One last one, and then we'll move on. My question was, since it's a personal story, as far as I remember, it's based on your two experience, there's a danger of turning the story into sentimental convention. So how do you distance yourself from the second? It's a really good question. So this this one was not the point. When you see it tonight at six o'clock, you will you will hope you'll not you'll be quite shocked. Like, oh my God, Eva, did this all happen to you? No, not at all, not at all. The only thing that's really true is that I'm kind of like this character. Like, I was the girl that was bullied at school. Everything else that happens to her is like a wish fulfillment for me. It's like, oh, this could have happened if I had done this or if I had done that. So this one is not so. It's more inspired by something I could relate to. But, um, for example, at the moment I am producing a feature film and we're in script development um, with a Spanish director called Mikel Guerra. And that is completely based on his story. It's um, something that happened to him when he was 16 years old. And it's been really hard for him to like move away from the truth. The first step was just to change the names of the characters. 
that was a huge step. Um, but what's really key is that he is really open. He's open to notes. He's um, so when people tell him, okay, this is a bit boring, or this, you know, he's he's actually listens. Not everybody does that. And he has me, so I mean, I'm quite hard on him. He has a sounding board, he has someone he can talk to. But it takes a lot longer, in my opinion, to get the script to be a really good script when it's so personal, because you have to go through all of these versions of the story that are kind of real, and then you kind of change a few things, and then you change a lot, and then you go back, you know, so it's, it's something you have to just be aware of, like you say, like, you know. So did it help you with working with an actors? Um, with this? Yeah, it did. But I had the story quite down um, when I brought them in. Um, but I, what I did is I spoke to some teenagers while I was writing, and I got them to read the script, just to tell me, like, could this happen? Because they're 15, or they're supposed to be 14, 15, and I, at the time I was 30. So I was like, well, it's 15 <laughs> years ago that I was 15. <laughs> Maybe this is ridiculous, maybe this is really childish, maybe this is too much. So I shared it with a couple of teenagers and they gave me really honest feedback and told me to change some dialogue. And then I completely let the actors change the dialogue um, in rehearsals because I knew that I don't sound like a teenager anymore. I sound really old. So we put in a lot of swear words and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool, let's let's move on and we can have lots of script. The script is always Питання було щодо того, якщо сценарій базується на якомусь особистому досвіді, напевно, важко це все проходити, коли ти знімаєш, важко це все переживати, тому що це щось зачіпає в тебе внутрішньо. І саме я вас сказала, що так, сценарій до вечірки вона писала базуючись на власному якомусь досвіді, але це було дуже так поверхнево, тому що так, вона була тією дівчиною, до якої тестували у школі, але о, все, що відбувається далі у фільмі, те, що ви побачите, що ці вечора в кінопанорамі. Це вона просто виглядала, що так може бути. І тут, до речі, торкаючись питання, кому можна давати сценарії для якихось порад під час написання, що також можна дати а, людям, які більше на цьому розуміються. Як, наприклад, вона давала двом знайомим тінейджерам, щоб вони почитали, зрозуміли, що взагалі так зараз говорять, що може бути така ситуація в школі, ну, в сучасній школі, коли я 15 років, тому що вона каже, що мені 15 років було дуже давно, і я тоді іншою мовою говорила. І вона також, наприклад, дозволяла під час репетиції акторам дуже змінювати текст, діалогів, тому що вона розуміла, що вона, може, написала якоюсь старомовною мовою. А, у неї був досвід про продюсування повнометражного фільму з іспанським режисером, і там фільм був повністю заснований на ну, це був як автобіографічний фільм цього режисера. І йому було дуже важко насправді знімати моментами, тому що час доводило щось справити, а ці правки давалися дуже важко через те, що це його особисте щось. Але він не зволяв правити, тому все було. Make sure it's only a few. I, I made the mistake of getting way too many people to give me their notes, and it can completely screw with your head. So just pick like your producer, maybe one person you really respect, and then you're gonna get someone from the film fund or someone that you know works with you. But don't get ten people to read your script because it's too much. Yeah. Не знала до моменту, кому давати сценарій для порад, давайте тільки кільком, я не дуже багато тому, кого поважаєте, своєму продюсеру, хто вам може дати реально круту пораду. Так, я продюсер, я говорив про трохи багато дуже боріх речей, але я поставив трохи сексі фото на них, щоб вас підтримати. Бюджет. Це щось, що ніхто не хоче говорити, але це дуже важливо, тому що без цього ви не зробите фільм, або ваші батьки будуть мати bail you out or your film doesn't get finished. So it's important to think, and of course this is your producer's job, so hopefully you found a good producer, but make sure you put together a budget. And this is something that you will develop a few times and you will adjust it, but I really recommend to put together at least two versions in the beginning. Of course, once you start shooting, you have a version, but put together your low budget. So the one that's like, if, afterwards, if I don't raise X, something, some amount, 1,000 euros, 10,000 euros, 100,000 euros. But don't raise this much money, then I won't make the film. You need to know that number, because you're going to have to pay for food at least, at least. Maybe you have to rent some equipment, probably you will. But there's always some cost, even if you make it in your house with your mom as the actress and your, your cousin as a cinematographer, you still might need to spend some money on 
for the festival submissions or something. So know that number, do the low budget, and then you have that as like the baseline. So if I don't raise 500 euros, then I, then I won't make it. And then do your dream budget. Think about okay, what film uh, funds can I go to, what competitions can I do, and we'll go through that in a little bit. And if that all goes well, what's my, what's my dream budget? Because that's the budget that you will show to those funds when you apply. So make it look really fat and juicy, and like you can raise a lot of money. You probably end up somewhere in the middle. Budget. Коли будете робити бюджет, то варто зробити дві версії. Мінімальна, тобто версія, де ви рахуєте всі мінімальні затрати, затрати на транспортування, на їжу, на якісь прості речі, і бюджет вашої мрії, тобто де ви включаєте вже фестивалі, подачі на заявки на ці фестивалі, і все, що вам знадобиться. І в результаті, напевно, буде, ви зможете знайти суму грошей, яка буде десь приблизно посередині між бюджетом вашої мрії і бюджетом мінімальним. Now, these are just some top tips that I put together, which I think everyone should think about when they put together a budget. Of course, you need to think about like a thousand other things. And for those of you who are interested, I can show you some budget breakdowns afterwards, because I think most of you are directors and you don't really care. Break everything down. And a simple way to do it is just to write down, like, do a brainstorm, and just write down all of the questions and just throw it all in and then put, put numbers next to it. Ну і тут є кілька пунктів, які просто обов'язково мають бути, мають бути включені в бюджет. Це, перш за все, треба чітко продумати всі можливі варіанти, скільки днів зйомок буде, скільки людей буде в команді, скільки акторів буде, які будуть локації, та чи потрібно вам за ці локації буде платити. But uh, because it's creative, you start going, okay, well, do I need any visual effects? Well, okay, if we have a dream budget, we'll put in some, you know, visual effects, snow and a snowstorm, but what if we don't have the money? Okay, we could do it this way. So it becomes a creative, like, you know, I'm trying to sell it to you. Okay, it's not working. Um, so, quick tips. Um, put a contingency, which is your, like, basically your oh shit money. So if your budget is 10,000 euros, put five to 10% of that budget, so another thousand, five, 500 to 1,000 in your oh shit. So like if there's, a, if there's rain on the day that you were gonna shoot your summer scene, you know, you have to shoot an extra half day, or, or if your actor becomes sick, that happened to me last week, that wasn't great at all. Um, it, somebody missed a flight the other day, I had to take money out of the contingency, needed some extra equipment. There's always something that you forget about. And so I'd say if it's your first short film, put 10%. If you've made, like we have made eight short films, I can put 5% because I'm getting to know a little bit more what the typical mistakes are, so I put that in the budget. But really put that in. Будьте креативними, коли ви прописуєте бюджет, наприклад, подумайте, якщо вам потрібен якийсь візуальний ефект, вам потрібен буде, наприклад, сніг, то ви можете на нього витратити якісь реальні гроші і зробити це якісно. Або якщо ні, то подумайте, чим ви його заміните, та як це буде виглядати. А другий пункт – це обов'язково припишіть в бюджеті десь 5-10% витрат на, ну, як каже Єва, о щит, о чорт витрат, якщо буде якийсь форс-мажор. Тобто, якщо у вас в бюджеті, наприклад, 10 тисяч гривень, то це має бути 10 тисяч гривень на якісь такі витрати. Наприклад, якщо планується зйомку у сонячний день і все вже зібрали, всіх зібрали, то раптом починається злива і все переноситься, а на це вже витратилися гроші. Це теж треба враховувати. And I mean, these are mostly practical things, but don't forget about food. <laughs> it's so, if you're doing it for a film and you're not paying people well, make sure you pay for their food and make sure you get their train home. It's really, really important. Um, and then about fees, consider flat rates. I mean, we just did a short film. We had budget, we had money, but we didn't have enough money to pay everyone their normal fee. So, for example, what I decided to do was to be fair to everybody. So everybody, you can either do everybody gets the same, or that all of the heads of department get the same and then all the assistants get a little bit lower, but all the same. I really recommend something like this. Just think about if they start talking to each other, <laughs> are they gonna be really pissed off that one is making a lot more and one is doing your favor for free? So think about that, really consider that. 
А, ну, базово треба подумати про їжу та транспортування і також про виплати команді, тобто подумати, а, скільки хто буде отримувати. Тому що якщо вони потім між собою спочатку розмовляти, зрозуміють, що о, я отримую там 10 разів більше, ніж хтось інший, а я працюю майже за безкоштовно, то це може бути дуже неприємно. Тому подумайте, може варто більш урівняти їх у їхніх зарплатах. Uh, don't forget about post-production. It's not enough to just film the, like, to get the film in the can and then, oh no, you ran out of money, you know, who's going to edit it, how are we going to finish it? So put that in your budget. Think about music. Oh my god, I see so many short films with, like, really fancy American, like, pop music in it. You go, okay, they got away with it, but they didn't pay for it. You know, usually you don't pay for it. Okay, you can get away with some stuff in short films, but this could mean that a film festival won't take your film. So be careful with music and try and get it either from the musician directly. I mean, music clearance is very expensive. Um, get, get your friends to write some music that's very similar to the pop song that you're putting in. So think about music, put that in your budget. Think about your festival costs. I mean, I started doing this now as a, as a rule, is to always put money in the budget for the festival, call, and quite a lot, actually. Because if my goal with the film was to get it into film festivals, it is going to cost almost as much as making the fucking film. Like, it is so expensive. It depends on how expensive the film is. But it is so expensive and time-consuming, sending DVDs, putting all this without a box. It's very expensive. So try and put some money aside for that and don't use it all on making the film. Because this is actually one of the most important things is to get people to see the film. Ну, обов'язково треба пам'ятати про постпродакшн, тому що якщо ви вже зняли фільм, це ще не все. Треба ще його відправити на монтаж, на допрацювання, і також треба підібрати музику. І я ви кажете, що дуже часто вони бачать фільми з жахливою якоюсь повсовою музикою, тому краще підібрати якусь директорську музику, або якщо у вас є друзі, музиканти, попросити їх написати спеціально для цього фільму музику. Тому що іноді навіть через погану озвучку не потрапляють фільми на фестивалі. А інший момент це витрати на фестивальну вже на те, щоб їх відправляти на фестивалі, тому що виявляється, що іноді відправити фільм на фестиваль коштує майже стільки, скільки його зробити і потім спродакшн разом. And I mean for those of you that are producers that are interested, we can talk about cash flow, cost reports and budgets in the break. But um, but it's important to just know your money, where it's going, how it's going, so like how how much you have left, when is the money coming in, and that's all these three things, budget, cash flow, cost report, and I won't go through it now because it's super boring, but if you're interested, come find me later. And if you're interested in seeing how to explain the cost of the cost, how to explain the cost of the cost, then there is a link, there is a link, there is a link, there is a link, and after that, you can go to the link, and look at the specific examples of the budget. Cool. So, now you know how much money you need, where the hell are you going to get the money from? That's your next question. So, financing. In, when I started making films, I made them all with money from my own pocket, from the universities I was working with, uh, crowdfunding often. Uh, people work for free, so tell the folks when. <laughs> so, I mean, I've definitely made a lot of those films, and those films aren't worse. But if you can only make so many films like that. So you have to start being really clever about trying to raise money straight away because you can only ask your friends to crowdfund maybe two films. <laughs> They're gonna be really bored with your third crowdfunding campaign. So, you know, already straight away start applying for stuff. Now, I don't know exactly what the situation is in the Ukraine with film funds. What, can someone tell me what you have? <laughs> I mean, it's always bad, especially for shorts. But do you have, any national or regional funds for yes. shorts? You do? Okay. Because that's, that's good news. Like, if you go to the States, they don't have anything. So at least you have something. And what I really, really, really want to just put in your minds is always apply. Even if it's your first film, if you are eligible, apply. You probably won't get it the first time, but they've seen your name. So the next film you make, apply again. They've seen your film, they remember the name of the film you made before, they said no to that because then you didn't have maybe so much experience, and you're applying again. So you see that you're really interested, that you're really professional, and you learn from every time you make an application. They're really often very annoying and tricky and time consuming, but they do two things. One, one thing is it teaches you how to write good applications, and secondly, you become really clear about the project you're making. You have to put it on paper, write a synopsis, be really clear about the budget, 
And that it's all good stuff because it's just gonna help you make your phone. Щодо фінансування, звісно, перші фільми можливо будуть фінансувати з власної кишені, з допомогою краудфандингу, люди будуть працювати безкоштовно, але так можна зробити один-два фільми, а потім вже ваші, ваші друзі просто знудяться це все робити за дякою. Тому треба думати, де можна знайти гроші, це різні фонди, гранти. І ну, сказали, що у нас є регіональні агенції, які фундують короткометражні фільми. Дуже корисно навіть просто надіслати їм заявку, навіть якщо ви не отримаєте е, гроші, вони побачать, що ви зацікавлені, ви підійшли другий раз, третій, вони вже будуть бачити ваше ім'я, розуміти, що ви людина зацікавлена, ви знаєте, що робити, і ви хочете знімати кіно. І дуже також допомагає те, що коли ви подаєтесь на грант, то вам треба заповнити заявку і дуже чітко все сформулювати, що ви знімаєте, як ви це будете знімати, на що будуть йти гроші, які вони дають. І це вам також допомагає більш чітко зрозуміти, як буде проходити процес створення фільму. Окей, фільм фонд. Якщо ви можете платити один, платити один. Це номер один. Тому є також можливості, це більше для фільмів, але я вже робив це з шортами. The more experienced you are, the easier it is, but it's to find a co-producer in another country, which also has a film fund. Now, it's hard to get them on board unless you already have your film fund in place, but it's a good way to, to build relationships for the future. Um, if you, for example, I'm doing a short film this, uh, this summer, with, um, which is financed by the Icelandic Film Fund, but I have co-producers in Sweden who also have money from there. And the reason it's very annoying, it's very time consuming to do all this paperwork. But what I'm hoping, and the reason I did it with this short, is because this director is ready for a feature film. So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to start doing a short film together, we'll build a relationship, the film fund in Sweden will know who she is, and then hopefully when we do the feature. So that's one way to go, but it's one of the hardest things to do with shorts. Так ще дуже корисний спосіб знайти гроші, він не дуже зручний, дуже і легкий, це знайти співпродюсерів в інших країнах. Наприклад, ну це більше підходить для повнометражного кіно, ніж для короткометражного, але якщо ви вже знайшли якісь партнерів під час виробництва короткого метру, то ви можете вже залишити їх контакти і вони вам допоможуть під час створення повнометражного кіно. Ну от, наприклад, під час останнього фільму Ева співпрацювала з співпродюсерами зі Швеції, і тобто це частина грошей з Ісландії, частина зі Швеції вже легше. Um, there's lots of other things. There's competitions. I'm going to show you one that I did, which was interesting. But sometimes they cost money, so you know it's not always the best. But competitions are sometimes an option. I'd say other grants and bursaries. I've been really cheeky with this. So, for example, if you see advertised an arts grant, convince them that they should fund your film with the arts grant. You know, like look outside the box and look at other things and go, okay, but you know, I can convince them. For example, what I've done is I've used. It's, a, it's called an Erasmus thing. Um, it's a European spon like sponsored grant, and it's for, um, it's like really random. It's like for helping young people as a youth. I, I, was, I was younger back then. So what I did is I applied for this, and I brought some British crew over to Iceland, which was paid for by this grant. It was really random, but I convinced them that this film was in this framework that they needed. And so get creative, you know, convince them that you're, також подавайтесь на конкурси, подавайтесь на гранти, і варто шукати гранти не тільки конкретно у військовому спрямуванні, що стосується кінематографу. Можна пошукати гранти в якихось компаніях, фондах, які займаються спонсоруванням якихось арт-проєктів, і признати, що ваш фільм він дуже важливий як арт-проєкт. Або конкретний приклад з досвіду – це коли вони подавалися на грант Erasmus. Розумію, разом з Мундуса, які спонсорують проекти, що допомагають молоді розвиватись. І вони це представили так, що команда з однієї країни буде подорожувати до іншої країни задля зйомок фільму, і це буде їх розвивати, з'єднувати, робити якісь міжкультурні зв'язки. І вони отримали цей грант від Еразмуса. Um, and then there's the classic stuff, like investors, um, it's hard to find them, and they're expensive. <coughs> so it's someone that has money, that's willing to put it into your film, but they also want their money back. And it's really hard with short films, because you know, I don't make any money. So it's really hard to convince someone to put money in, but that's one way to go. Um, deferred payments, that's something you use a lot. What that means, it's, I ask you to come on my film and work as the sound man, right? And I tell you, I can't pay you your whole fee or any of your fee, but if we make money, you'll get your money. 
So it's an agreement to pay everyone afterwards. Um, I don't recommend doing this with all of your crew, but to, with your co-producers, with your producers, with your director. Usually the director doesn't make any money, but if you make money, they'll get, get a fee. So that's something um, I use a lot, actually. Наступне це інвестори, звісно, дуже важко знати інвесторів для короткометражного фільму, тому що зазвичай це не прибуткові фільми, ну важко переконати людину вкласти гроші, якщо вона від цього нічого фінансово не отримає. А, і те, що зазвичай ну, часто використовується, це якісь а, невизначені виплати, так мовити. Тобто, якщо ви шукаєте собі людей в команду, але ви не впевнені, що ви зможете їм заплатити після фільму, ви відмовляєте, що так, ти мені прийдеш, допоможеш, наприклад, як сам продюсер чи як е, оператор, і якщо в нас буде якийсь прибуток, то ти отримуєш свою, свою частину. Якщо ні, то, ну, вибач. Треба ну, вміти домовлятися з людьми з цієї точки зору. And your time is a deferred payment if you're not making, you know, so you should put that in the budget. Put that as your investment. So, you know, estimate that as how much time as a producer or writer or director you're putting in, value that and say it's my investment in the film. Because you know, maybe you'll make some money with your film and then you can get that back. Um, more things, in-kind support, that's something almost everybody uses. It's, you call up your camera equipment rental and go, hey, can you give us some equipment for free? But that's the one. So. You call lots of places like that. You ask someone to do your sound post-production or, you know. But just think, take a moment to think, why would they help you? Because that's your best way to sell it to them. So, for example, I've gone to equipment rental houses and going, this time I don't have any money, but I'm making a feature film in two years, and I'm going to come back to you. So, like, can we establish a relationship now? So just think about, you know, what they want to hear and whether, why the hell would they give you their stuff for free? But they often will. That's a good one to do. Також подумайте про те, як можна зекономити, просто попросивши когось щось вам надати якесь матеріальне забезпечення безкоштовно. Наприклад, подзвонити до компанії, яка надає обладнання для зйомок, і спитати, чи можна нам цього разу використати це безкоштовно. Але коли ви приїдете до них, то подумайте, для, цього, для чого це їм потрібно, тому що, звісно, вони дадуть безкоштовно, але якийсь плюс їм потрібен від цього. І, тобто, наприклад, скажіть, що е, так, зараз ми беремо це за просто так, але через два роки ми знімаємо полнометражний фільм, ми до вас повернемось, ми будемо користуватися вашими послугами, і, може, повноцінно сплатимо за все це. Тобто, ми наладнаємо стосунки. I mean, then you have other fun things like sponsorship, so I usually get something from Coca-Cola just to give the crew water or to give them drinks, and then we put that in the, in the film, someone's drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> like, I, I've done crazy stuff like this, I usually get coffee for free, um, you know, you, you, you might get some food from a restaurant and you put a post on Facebook with your famous actor eating their lunch, like stupid stuff like this, but it all adds up and helps with your budget. Crowdfunding, I think you all know what that is, and something we try not to talk about. It's painful and, like you said, it doesn't always work. But it is, I mean, it is great. And if you use crowdfunding, I mean, be really honest about is this the right project to do it with. If you're making a documentary about some human rights issue, it could be great because people will get behind it. But if it's just your artistic experimental short film, uh, your mom and dad are going to put some money in. You know, like just, it's, it's really tough. But it can be used to build audiences and it can be quite Ева радить також використовувати product placement, використовувати спонсорів, наприклад, якщо ви берете спонсором Coca-Cola, то вони можуть вам надати безкоштовні, безкоштовні напі, напої під час зйомок, і ви просто поставите десь пляшечку з Coca-Cola під час зйомок у кадр. Або запостите, як відомий актор, п'є Coca-Cola у себе на Фейсбуці. Краудфандинг, звісно, це всі використовують, але подумайте також, що навіщо будуть це, буде це м, спонсорувати. Тобто, якщо це якась документалка про, про права людини, то це багатьох стосується і їм буде якийсь резон вкласти в це гроші. А якщо це просто спонсорування вашого доробку артистичного, то навіщо їм це робити? And then, I mean, sadly, most short films at least have a little bit of this, your own money. It, it sucks, but it's true. It tends to be the case, but what I really recommend is what you really do is use all of your favors. So this is also why you really think, why am I making this short film? Because if you make the wrong short film, you use all of your favors, and then you want to do another one, who are you going to go to? You can't really ask people for three or four favors. So really be careful about putting your time in the right project and then putting everything in it. Not necessarily all your money, but all your time, all your favors. 
all your phone calls, so that's my advice. Ну і треба також не забувати, що оскільки ви не знайшли гроші від спонсорів, фондів, все одно доведеться якісь свої власні гроші вкладати, час від часу вкладати свій, свій час, свої гроші, всі свої ресурси, всього себе. Окей, so let's go back to the Rainbow Party and I'm going to show you how I finance this film. Now just for some context, it is one of the most expensive short films I've made. Normally, I don't have all of this money. Normally, it's been one, like maybe one of these things. I do a crowdfunding and I put some of my money, or I do a film fund and then some deferred payments. But Rainbow Party was a particularly successful. I mean, the dream budget. We got the dream budget. Um, but don't worry, you don't always have to do it this extreme to get your film made. I think you know that. А зараз повертаємось до радужної вечірки, саме як були знайдені гроші на цей фільм. І це приклад фільму, коли Ева майже дотягнула до свого бюджету мрій, тому що пишемо, що вона знайшла, і довелося використовувати всі прилічені до цього ресурси, тому що зазвичай ну, реально використовуєш один-два ресурси з тих, які були названі. So the hardest thing is actually to get the first bit of money. Once you get the first bit of money or the first um film fund or something behind you, then other people are more likely to give you money. It's the most annoying thing. But getting that first bit of money is the hardest. And in my case, I took part in the competition. I went, I was at the Cannes Film Festival, just working, I was there anyway. And there was a competition with a TV channel called Shorts TV. And I took part in it and I won that. And that was the best thing for the project because once I had that, it was easier for me to go to the film fund and go, hey, look, somebody likes my project. Don't you also want to put money? So it made everything much easier. So just keep going because that first bit of money, suddenly the ball will start rolling. Um, but I'll talk a bit about, more about pitching in a bit, but that, this was a pitch competition. Um, then we got some money from the Icelandic Film Center, which is obviously my home country. It's where we filmed the film. So that's obviously a clear reason. But I did a cheeky thing, which is I also went to London, which is where I also lived. And I convinced them that this was a British project. <laughs> um, because I was living in the UK, um, although the film was going to be in Icelandic language, it shot in Iceland. But we had a, a British co-production company. And I was living in London, so it made sense, and somehow they got on board. It was a bit unusual. But this might, for example, be the Swedish bonus, too, for example. Um, I told you about the Erasmus grant. So this was a, a grant that was outside the box, something unusual, but I managed to bring them in. And then one of the biggest things that happened to us was we got this company called Saga Film involved. Now, they're one of the biggest production companies in Iceland. They make a lot of TV shows, they make a lot of, you know, advertisements, all kinds of stuff, and they're wanting to make more movies, which is what was in it for them. And they have also an equipment rental company. So this is South and Luxor. And they came on board and they brought in all of the equipment and most of the post-production, which was, of course, huge. It was worth loads of money. And why did they do it? Because A, they wanted to increase their film profile, and B, they want me to make my feature film with them. So this is why they came on board. Ну, найважче знайти саме першу частину грошей, коли вже отримали від когось гроші перші, то інші бачать, що ви вже хтось вам дав гроші, і вони їм так бояться допомогти вам фінансово. А в випадку з вечіркою це Ева поїхала до Кан, і там був пічинг від телеканалу Shorts TV де як вона виграла і отримала якусь певну суму грошей, і вже з цим їй було легше йти в інші компанії і шукати спонсорів. А, вона отримала фінансування від Ісландського кіноцентру і одночасно також від компанії у Лондоні, тому що вона живе в Британії, і вона представила так, що ми ж будемо це створювати у співробництві з Британією, і я живу в Британії, тому це буде частково британський фільм. Також вона отримала грант від Еразмуса для розвитку молоді. І а також є в Ісландії компанія Saga Film, так зрозуміло, це державна компанія, яка спонсорує багато фільмів. І вони саме допомагали, допомагали з боку надання різного обладнання і допомагали в постпродакшені. Чому вони це робили? Тому що вони планували співпрацювати майбутньою заявою під час створення вже повнометражного фільму. Плюс це був для них значний плюс 
додати цей фільм до свого переліку фільмів, в яких вони приймали участь у створенні. And I mean, of course, we had sponsorships with Coca-Cola, as you do. Um, no, but we had a bunch of that kind of stuff. And we had some investment from a company which will get their money back. So it wasn't a lot of money, but it helped. And then all the production companies deferred their fees, which means that they didn't. So, so when we make money, one day, we first had to pay this guy back because they put money in. And then these guys and us, we share the profit because we all have to get our fees. So that's how we found it. Ну, і, звісно, були спонсори, Coca-Cola, і були інвестори, які ну, не великі гроші вклали, але вони якийсь свій процент в результаті отримують прибутку. Ну і також були самі ці виплати невизначені, від яких отримують свій прибуток ті компанії, в першу чергу це саме фільм, і ну, інвестор Гакнвіркні. В першу чергу, тобто саме їм допомагали безкоштовно, але ще один плюс для них був в тому, що якщо від фільму буде прибуток, то вони будуть першими, хто отримає цей свій процент від прибутку. So after this I'm going to move into talk about pitching, but yeah, there's some questions. Uh, maybe it's about pitching because I wanted to ask what is an ideal presentation of film to you. That's my next thing, so we'll go through that in a little bit. So I just want to say a little bit about pitching, because apparently I've become a bit of an expert on this, and it's always quite useful. But um, it's a really scary word, pitching, but it's really not, because you're basically pitching your project all the time. If you're talking to your friend at the bar, you're pitching your project. That is what you're doing. If you're writing a little information in an email to a production company, that's a pitch. So there's like really formal pitches, and then there's like very informal pitches. And the more informal pitches you do, the better you get at talking about your project. So every opportunity that you get to talk about yourself, talk about it, that's my advice. And if you have a producer, they are much better at it usually, because they're going to make you sound really, really good as a director. Because it's really hard to be like, oh, well, I won this, and I won that, and I'm so fabulous, and I'm going to do this other film. But your producer can be like, I'm working with this director. She's amazing. She's done this, this, and this, and this. So use your producer as well when you're pitching. But um, yeah, when you're, when you're about to do a pitch, just think about some basic stuff. How much time do you have? Are you at a cocktail party? and you're talking to someone really important and maybe someone's going to come and interrupt you halfway through. And if that's the case, you might have 10 minutes, you might have one minute, but make sure you get all the information in the beginning. Or are you having dinner with a few friends and one of them is a film producer and you have all evening to talk about it. So think about the time you have, the setting you're in, um, and who you're pitching to. Is it someone really experienced? Is it someone that really likes you as a person? You know, just, just tailor your your pitch to the person and the setting that you're in. А, ну що стосується пічингу, ну, всі знають, що це таке. Тобто це подача фільму на виробництво. А, використовувати будь-які можливості для пічингу, це може бути якісь офіціальні події, саме створені для пічингу, це може бути навіть просто переписка з потенційними спонсорами або кінокомпанією, і ви в переписці можете неформально себе представити, і, тобто постійно-постійно себе продавати, представляти себе максимально ефективно і в гарному світлі. I don't mean the types of pitches we kind of said, but the elevator pitch is the one that is really good to really practice. It's like the 30 seconds. It's like if you're at a film festival and you go in the elevator and suddenly like Steven Spielberg's next to you and you have 30 seconds, he's like, oh, tell me about your film. <laughs> you know, and then he's on the 10th floor and he's walking out. So, it, you know, how do you explain your film in 30 seconds or 60 seconds? That's really good to practice and to have down. And usually you'll do that pitch and then if they are interested, they'll be like, oh, tell me more, let's have a coffee. Right? So I'm trying to get that one like really good. I mean, like I talked about the cocktail pitch, it's the one that's like medium length, you're having a drink, someone's going to interrupt you. Um, you might have a meeting, so that's easy, so you've prepared for that. They've, they've asked you to come to their office and tell you about their projects and you have a good 20 minutes. Maybe you show them some visuals, maybe you show them a clip from your previous work. Um, the competition is the one I'm going to show you what I did, um, which is like the shorts TV. So if you're doing a competition, there'll be a time limit. There'll be like certain things you have to say. That's the stuff you really prepare for. And then, like I said, in writing, if you're writing an email to a production company, you're like, hey, I would like to get some equipment for free, <laughs> but this is the film I'm making. So that's, that's another thing. 
які бувають види саме презентації свого фільму. Це дуже коротко, наприклад, коли виявити ситуацію в ліфті, і у вас є півхлини, щоб зацікавити людину, і щоб вона продовжувала далі з вами розмову. Середній – це, що вже, наприклад, ви пішли на каву, у вас більше є більше часу, є така неформальна обстановка. Довший пічинг – це коли ви вже Офіційно зустрічаєтесь, наприклад, в офісі і офіційно на офіційному рівні обговорюєте, чи будуть вони вас продюсувати. Конкурс, як це був у Даканах, з, з вечіркою, де є конкретні правила, де є якісь обмеження у цьому часі, і треба до цього готуватись. Ну і просто в переписці, в емейлах про компанії до своїх партнерів. Practice, practice, practice. I'm going to show you what I did for Shorts TV, and I practiced that. I recorded that. I watched it back. Like it was really geeky, but it really helped. Um, so don't be like practice on your friends. You know that really helps. Or you don't need producer. <laughs> Use your producer. Use your. Um, tell the ending. You know nobody wants to be like, oh, I have this great film. It's like it starts like this, and then something happens. <laughs> because that's what you tell the people that are going to go see your film, but the people that are going to put money in your film, they want to know beginning, middle, and end, or if it's not a three-tax structure, something else. But uh, tell the ending. Be really clear that it's a short film. Be clear about the genre. Just be like, it's a short film, coming of age, for Rainbow Party, coming of age, it's about 15 minutes long, it's set in Iceland, and okay, they know what it is. And then you tell a quick thing about the story, and you tell the ending. Um, and then something I'm always trying to learn. It's, Slow down, <laughs> breathe. Um, we always think we're more nervous than the other person thinks we're nervous. Like, it's this weird thing, but like, I always think I'm super, super stressed and talking really fast, and later on people are like, no, you seem really confident. <coughs> so, I mean, don't worry about it so much. And especially if English is not, or whatever language you're pitching in is not your first language, or if the person you're pitching to doesn't speak that as the first language. Slow down, talk, you know, repeat yourself. Just think about who you're pitching to. And, um, and the last thing is pitch with passion. If this is your baby, this is your project, you know, you don't have to be too clinical about it. Like, if you can tell me why you're making this film, or why you are really interested in it, and why it's so, you have to make this film, I'm gonna wanna listen to you. And it's really, really charming, actually. So, just, yeah, really show me, like, why you wanna make this film. Практикуйтесь, 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 практикуйтесь з друзями, з колегами, як саме ви будете це, про цей фільм розповідати, а що ви будете казати. Не бійтесь розповідати повністю весь сценарій, розповідати кінець історії, щоб зацікавити, якого жанру буде фільм, що саме там буде відбуватись. А, не нервуйте, бо завжди здається, що ну, ви нас, насправді вам здається, що більш нервовані, ніж це здається зі сторони. А, якщо а, ви розмовляєте під час пічингу ну, не на вашій рівні мої, то також більш повільно кажіть, щоб було більш зрозуміло, або якщо англійська для людини, з якою ви розмовляєтеся, теж не її рідна мова, будьте просто спокійні, не нервуйте. І розповідайте про свою роботу, про свій фільм з пристрастю, з віддачою, тому що це ваша робота, це те, що цим ви займаєтеся. Окей, so I took part in this competition for Shorts TV called Pitch. And um, it's actually it's a really cool competition. They do it at quite a few festivals. We're just trying to get them here, actually. That'd be really nice. But um, what they do is they select, a, you apply a very easy application, just a little bit about your film and yourself. And they choose, I don't know, 20 filmmakers or something to do, uh, I think it's a two and a half minute pitch, which they film. So it's terrifying. <laughs> um, and then they, sh they uh, put it online with also a 30 second um, teaser of your previous work. And so you have one shot at it. You go in front of the camera and you know you have two and a half minutes and if it's longer than that, they cut you off. And they put it online and then there is an online like online voting, which is horrible and you just have to like, bug all your friends on Facebook. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the top five go to a jury and then you win a bit of money. Um, you were asking about Shorts TV. It's not, Shorts TV is basically a TV channel that shows short films. Um, yeah, I know, it's kind of really? <laughs> but um, they are, I think they're based in the UK, but they have European, like they're on a lot of cable networks, and they're also in Asia and America. So they're a good place to sell your film as well. Um, get in touch with them. You won't make much money, but you might sell your film. Um, and yeah, so they're always looking to do some interesting stuff, and of course, if they can put their name on the film, that's what's in it for them. Um, but yeah, so Shorts TV, although it's TV, they put money in to make a short and then like 
when we did the final contract after we won, I made sure that in there it said that I'd have two years at least, or less if I wanted it, to put the film at the festival before it would go on TV. Because it's important to keep your festival time sacred. Because if it goes on television, a lot of festivals are like, no, it's too old. So even though it's a TV channel, they understand that it's the short format. So yeah, so I did the, I'm going to show you, it's really embarrassing for me, but I think it's a useful for you, my pitch. At the time, the film was called One of Them, so a totally different title, but it's the same film. A few things changed, you know, throughout the process, so um, the names of a couple of the characters and stuff like that, but yeah, I'll give you a, a flavor of how I did it, and I, I will not stress it enough, I rehearsed this like crazy. So this isn't something you just like wake up in the morning and go and do, like, I, I wrote it down and I, I like, filmed it on iMovie and like watched it back. It's too long, okay, I have to cut some stuff out. And uh, this is the result, so let's show it to you. Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is the same pitch that they performed in Lukanach. And it's uh, happening in this format, so you have to give a request to the organizers, who are the 20 participants. These 20 participants have two and a half minutes of video, where they представляють свою роботу, свій майбутній фільм, і з цих двох з половиною хвилин, пів хвилини – це короткі тізери їх попередніх робот. Ти це все маєш зафільмувати, ти дуже хвилюєшся, коли це знімаєш, і потім все це викладається онлайн, люди за це голосують в соцмережах, і з них вибирається п'ятеро лідерів, які вже йдуть потім до наголосування до журі. І що важливо, що Ева, ну, коли вона знімала ці дві з половиною хвилини, це було, був дуже довгий процес підготовки, це не просто так, що противник свій зробив це, тому треба підготуватись. І також вона казала, що ці Shorts TV – це а, британський телеканал, який показують виключно короткометражки, але в них є мережа по Європі та в Африці, тому дуже вигідно з ними співпрацювати, тобто є можливість показати свою короткометражку в багатьох країнах, але підписуючи контракт, варто подумати, скільки, який час ви виділяєте на фестивальний прокат, Перш ніж відправити це на телебачення. Hi, my name is Eva Sue. I'm a film and my sound producer and director. I've been producing shorts for a while. My short film Good Night was nominated for a BAFTA in 2013, and my short Red Reflections is a special pick here at the Short Film Corner in Cannes. But I'm here to tell you about my next project called One of Them. It is going to be my directorial debut and is also a very autobiographical project. It's a coming of age story with a lot of edge. It's about a girl called Sofia. She's 14 from Iceland and um, although a very complex and interesting girl, she's been bullied and sidelined from the kind of cool group of girls for as long as she can remember. Now she does have a best friend, but it's a boy. His name is Skuli but she wants nothing more than to be a part of this group of girls. And so we start the film on the day that Sofia decides that she's basically just had enough. She wants to fight back, and she wants to fight her way into this group of girls. And she does that by literally picking a fist fight with the leader. And this causes a kind of shift in dynamics between Sofia and the girls, and they decide to embrace her into the group. But as she becomes friends with the girls, she actually loses touch with her best friend, Skule. But now we fast forward and we find Sofia at a party. It's a rainbow party. Now a rainbow party is a party where teenagers get together and the girls put on different shades, different colored lipsticks. Um, Sofia, for example, is going to have a blue lipstick. And then the girls are expected to perform oral sex or give blowjobs to the boys, creating a sort of rainbow pattern on their penises. Now this is a loyalty test for Sofia and she's expected to take part in this with the girls. And after a few too many vodkas, she's pushed into a room to find a boy that she's expected to perform on. But it's a boy that's passed out on the floor, he's had too much alcohol. And when she realizes that this is her best friend, Skule, she has to make a decision on if she's going to basically rape or sexually molest her best friend in order to prove her loyalty to her new ones. So we're going to ask ourselves, how far is she willing to go in order to try and fit in with these girls? How far is she willing to go in order to become one of them? Thank you. And then there's just some stuff from Good Night, the showreel material. So I spoke really fast, and uh, I put a lot of information, but this is a competition about what you have to do. But I, I said the ending, or almost, uh, you'll find out at 6 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, 
yeah, I mean, this is on YouTube, so you know, you can look actually at all the comp like all the people that took part and see the good ones and the bad ones and just learn from them. Because um, you will spot if it's good or bad, and you'll be the judge of this. But that was one of the scariest things I've ever done. So <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching that. How's it called on YouTube? Um, if you Google my name, if you YouTube my name, you'll find it. Um, yeah, my name is right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it will come up. All right, so we're running out of time, so I'm going to go quite quickly, and then we have time at the end. Uh, we'll we'll have more questions, but um, we haven't even gotten to the shoot yet. Of course, the hardest thing is to get the film financed. So we've been stuck with this, but just some tips. Because the thing is that you guys, this is the stuff you will know the most about: is how to actually make the film. Like once you have the money, or once you you save the money, um, you know. But I'm just going to recap some of the stuff that I like to to kind of remind myself um, of some good tips and some good ideas. Um, we were talking about actors earlier. Um, my advice on how to choose your actors is first of all, just give yourself time to do it, especially if you're working with kids or teenagers, because they're really hard to find. Um, so uh, Good Night, for example, we delayed the shoot because we could not find this actor, the main girl. So make sure you have a good actor. Make sure you, you, you know, look to all through the Ukraine for this star because it's going to make your film. It's like one of those important, besides the script, it's the most important thing. Um, and then of course consider are you using real actors or are you using non-actors? And I mean both have good things and bad things, but just know them, know what, you know, what complications you get with non-actors. So if they're inexperienced, you might need more rehearsals, for example. Or you might like we worked with a little boy in one of the films, and we just used his real name because it was easier for him. You know, just little tips like that. But if you're working with experienced actors, you get, you are going to have less time to rehearse because they are very busy and they are doing you a favor. So there's there's complications with both sides. And um, I mean, with working with famous actors, I mean, do you really need a famous actor? That's always the question I ask. I mean. Sometimes it's really great to put a really famous face in your film if, if you can do it, of course. If you have some connections or you know, you know their agent and you can ask them. But, um, but I mean, do you really need it? Does it make the film better? Um, and also, can you afford them? <laughs> I mean, this is gonna be maybe a lot of your budget. Um, maybe you have some famous friends. I mean, we all work in TV and film and stuff, so you might have some famous friends. Maybe they'll do you a favor. But, if they're working for free, something I've done quite a few times is I've offered them an executive producer credit if they're famous. Because um, it's something in it for them. You know, they're doing you a favor, but maybe they're working on their producer, like Brad Pitt's a producer, right? Don't you know a producer? Everybody wants to be a producer. Don't give away the producer credit, but give them executive producer credit or co producer credit. No, maybe it's just a piece of. Сценарію річ це актори, кібер акторів. Подумайте, чи можете ви собі дозволити відомих акторів, чи взагалі вони вам потрібні в цьому фільмі, і чи ви будете використовувати професіоналів чи аматорів. Тому що, наприклад, якщо підбирати професіоналів, то а, у вас буде менше часу для репетицій з ними, тому що вони вже зайняті, зайняті в інших проектах. А, також подумайте, чи є у вас може, друзі, актори, які зможуть зіграти цю роль, зробити вам послугу. І якщо ви звертаєтесь до когось вже багато разів, щоб вони а, зіграли в вашому фільмі, просто так, а, то ви можете їм віддячити тим, що, наприклад, у, а, в титрах вкажете їхнє ім'я не лише як актора, але й як продюсера чи співпродюсера фільму. Це дуже великий плюс для них. And the crew, I mean, this is, I cannot say this often enough, Make sure you're working with people that are better at doing what they do than you are. So get a production designer that's better at production design than you are. You know, surround yourself with really talented people. That is going to make you look better. Don't do everything yourself. Find those people, put them all around you, and you're going to make a really good film. Підбираючи для себе команду, шукати людей, які кращі, ніж ви, в тому, для чого ви їх підбираєте. Тобто, якщо вам потрібен оператор, який краще на цьому розумієте, беріть його і оточіть себе професіоналом своєї справи. І, звісно, якщо ви знаєте їх, це фантастично, ви знаєте, як вони працюють, як їх темпер є. І якщо ви не знаєте, то візьміть рекомендацію. Вони можуть бути дуже really Famous cinematographer that's willing to do your short film, but they might be an asshole. I mean, I don't know. So, so, so call up a couple of directors that they've worked with and get because they also might just be really good advice. Like, oh, he's like this, but he, he's a little sensitive about that or whatever. So, so get get recommendations. 
А також враховувати, які саме це люди, ну, тобто, які вони як люди, а не як професіонали. Тобто підбирати по особистим контактам, або якщо ви хочете якогось, якогось відомого персону для себе, знайти, яка дуже і знає, як професіонал своєї справи, ви краще в кого спитаєте, що це за людина, а можливо, вона не дуже приємна людина співпраці. I know because you try and pick people that you think you might work with again, because that's the whole point. I mean, you might end up learning that you're not a good match, but hopefully, it's like, it's like going on a date, you know? Pick someone you think is hot, right? Pick someone that you think is talent, and try and see if you work well together. Be really, be really grateful and honorable. Like, people are coming to work on your film, and this is their time, and they could be doing a lot of other stuff with this time. So be super, super on point with paying their salary if you agreed at a certain time. Make sure you hit that. Make sure you feed them well. Make sure you get them home on time. Like this stuff is your reputation and it carries on into next production. So be really, really just, you know, honest about the stuff that you say you're going to do. Поважайте час інших людей, які, яких ви не маєте на роботу. Підклутись про те, щоб вони були ситі, виспані та отримували час на свої гроші. And I mean, I put here professional uh, versus young crew. I mean, sometimes it's fantastic to work with a really experienced person, a cinematographer, but they might have less time to prepare. And your best friend who's gone to film school with you is going to put all of their time in. So just weigh that up and make sure you're picking the right thing for that project, because it's not always the same thing. І не бійтесь поєднувати професіоналів і молоду команду, тому що, можливо, так, людина може бути дуже професійною в якійсь справі, але вам потрібно, потрібно не це, варто, щоб вона просто максимально ідеально підходила для виконання цієї роботи. Вона може бути не професіонал, але вона це зробить краще. Um, and once you get into the shoot, there's a few things that I like to remember. First of all, are you really ready? I mean, like I said, I delayed the shoot because I didn't have the actor. You know, are we really sure that the script is perfect? You know, or should we wait a month or two? Like, be, be ready, because you get one shot at this. You're building everything up to this one week shoot, perhaps, and then everything else is the result of that. So just really, really try and prepare. Make sure that you found your actors, your script is ready, your funding is in place. Don't shoot it unless you have the money to finish it. <laughs> People want to money doesn't just magically happen. And then throughout the production of the film, as you're filming it, your producer should be watching your budget. See every day how much you spent and what you plan to spend. And if you've gone over budget, because then if you spot it early, you can fix it somewhere else. You can save money perhaps and I don't know, don't throw a rap party or something like that. Uh, yeah.